Now, what we're going to establish first today, we've got three whole periods to do this, right? Um, I want to establish an overall strategy that's going to work, that's going to be effective in helping us tackle all the different rates of change questions we're going to get. I could have given you this yesterday. I could have given you this before we touched our first question. But there's a really important reason. This is why I don't want your pens in your hands for a second. There's a really important reason why I withheld it from you. Think about this for a second. We've done this before, right? If you meet a question and you're like, I've never seen this question before, and you say, how do I do this? And someone gives you, here's a recipe. Here's steps one through five, right? Once you go all the way through, you will get an answer out. Okay? And we do that sometimes. Uh, probably a, a common recent example, think about this, think about a, a topic that we did recently where there is a highly structured set of steps that you go through every single time. What topic did we do recently? <laughs> Mathematical induction, right? Now, we told you, okay, here's step one, here's step two, here's, we outlined the whole thing. Uh, part of the reason why is because you, it's really hard to kind of make up induction. Whoever did it was really, really smart. We do not expect you guys, this is centuries of mathematical thought that's gone into that. Okay? But when it comes to rates of change, you've actually been dealing with all of the main ingredients of this. And I want you to have a look at your working examples now, right now. You've seen all of these ingredients, um, for, to keep the metaphor going, um, in the past. You've worked with them quite thoroughly. Think about the things that you know. Have a look at um, what was the very first one I gave you? I can't even remember now. Was it the um, the one from the um, it was the was it the balloon? The balloon was what we were thinking about, right? What kinds of pieces of knowledge did you have to draw on to have a look at the balloon? Not a rhetorical question. Have a think. Okay, we needed some formulas, right? We wanted the surface area of a sphere. We wanted the Volume of a sphere, so you just need to know those, yeah? Now, you do know those, you've learned them a long time ago. All right, that's good, so you knew some measurement formulas. What else did you need to know? Have a look at the question, have a look at what you did as you went through the question. Hmm. Paul, you can shout out, surely you can shout out something else that you can see there. Okay, we needed to know how to differentiate. You're so good at this now, you look at it and you forget, oh, this is a thing I didn't used to know how to do. But you know now, right? You need to know how to differentiate, you need to know how to do chain rule, right? Because remember, we, we sort of threaded all these derivatives together, right? Now you know all of these things, which is why I wanted to put you a little bit in the deep end before giving you this. Because if you get given this and then off you go, you can sort of fall into the trap of just becoming a bit of a machine that just does rules, okay? But we want you to be a bit better than that, right? Now that you have encountered these, I want to put together well, what is an overall strategy that does actually work? Can we see what you've actually been doing and put some names on this, okay? Good morning, Michael. Nice to join us. <laughs> Great to see you. All right, let me give you some, um, let me give you some verbs that will describe what we've actually been doing. Okay, so here's the first thing we did. We had to identify a bunch of things. Now when we have a look at the question, the two kinds of things I'm particularly interested in are constants and variables. Constants and variables. Now if you have a think back to say the, um, the balloon, Right? We had lots of variables there. We had things like the, well, tell me what kinds of things varied when we were looking at the balloon. Radius. Uh, the radius varied, the push. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, no, that's, it's, it's mirrored, isn't it? She can't see. You just, just push harder. That's okay. <laughs> uh, the, the radius changed, what else? The volume. the volume changed, the surface area changed. They all changed, right? Now, when you have a look at the variables, we got a whole bunch of them. We call them V, A, R, etc. Right? I want to make a, I'll use a different color here. I want to make a special note that not all variables are created equal, right? Some variables are more fundamental than others. They lead to the others changing, right? So in the case of the sphere, it would probably be the radius. That's the most important variable. It's the fundamental, the basic one, and it leads to all of the rest of them, okay? Uh, when we think about constants, some of the questions you've been having a look at, for example, that may, there might be a cylinder and it might have a constant radius, but its height can change or something like that. Okay? So some values in there, they don't change and you need to know what they are. Um, what was the most important constant that you tended to find in the questions we were having a look at? 
integration okay now you've got the the constant of integration which sort of comes up but there will often be a constant that's actually provided to you a number given to you in the question think back to the balloon there was a number I gave you it was the value was 70 but what was it what was 70 meant to signify more often than not it's a rate right it's a rate of change I think we were talking about um, blowing air into the balloon, so that's how much air is going into there. Um, or we talked about, do you remember we looked at the cube? The cube and it was shrinking, right? What was the, what was the constant in that case? It was the, I think, you got the question in front of you, we all did it together. What's, what's changing at a constant rate? It's the side length and it was shrinking, it was reducing at that rate, right? So you need to identify these, these are import, pretty important. Okay, after you've identified, okay, I then want you to state the relevant equations. So right now you've got a whole bunch of pronumerals flying around. You know what they are, but you want to relate those pronumerals in particular equations, right? Now, because most of what we're looking at is geometric, right? These are t these tend to be. I mean, you told me just now: surface area, volume, um, perimeter, things like that. So these generally are measurement equations of some kind. Sometimes you're expected to just know them, like volume and surface area of a sphere. Other times they will provide it to you, but in any case you have to actually state what those equations are. Sometimes you've got to think of it yourself. Okay? Now, last major step. What did you then do to actually, I mean this is a rates of change question, so what did you do to all of this stuff to actually start working on it? You didn't just say it, you had to do some things, right? You have to differentiate. Um, sometimes you might even integrate, right? So we're going to use some calculus here, right? So we're going to determine and calculate um, the relevant derivatives or integrals and that kind of thing. And can you put in a, an underline as well underneath the word determine? Because we know how to calculate derivatives, we know how to use the rules, but it's just as important to be able to say, oh, okay, I'm after dr on dt. That's the thing I'm after. What are the other derivatives that will help me get to dr on dt? I might have to know dv on dt. That might be provided earlier. And then I have to get from dv on dt to dr on dt. How am I going to do that? And you're going to have to determine what other derivatives you actually need. Okay.